look at false position method. And this method is used to find the root of a given equation using the numerical way. So let's do this. From the previous video you watched on the bisection method, this is the same way, but in this way, we are trying to find our x out. With the bisection method, you divide the point, which is the upper bound and the lower bound, and get the arrow. But in this case, we are going to use a formula. Now, but still, the condition still holds. And this condition is that when you find it right and you input the lower bound into the function multiplied by the upper bound, if it's less than zero, then you are good to go. That means that the root of the equation is within that point. Or if you multiply the lower bound and the r, which is the midpoint, and you get less than zero, it means that the root is within that. But if you get greater than zero, it means that the root is not within that. But when you get to equal to zero, that means that the root is the upper bound. Let's take note of that. So let's take this question whereby we have the function of x is equal to s cubed plus 4x squared minus 10. How are you going to do it? In this case, the point has been given to us, but we are using false position. So when they specify that you use false position, that means we're going to use a formula. And this formula holds. So what is the formula you're going to use to find the midpoint? Then you continue from there. So with this, that is the upper bound minus the function of the upper bound times the lower bound minus the upper bound all over the function of the lower bound minus the function of the upper bound. So this is just a substitution. So with eta one, we are supposed to find our xr and finding our xr, we are going to get what? Which is, this is the lower bound and this is the upper bound. So then the upper bound minus the function of um, the upper bound. That means that we're going to substitute two into the function. That will give you two cube plus four bracket open two squared minus 10 and we're going to get a value then we're going to get one minus two then all over the function of one when you do substitution into the function given to us then minus the function of two and at the end you're going to get 1.265315 take note of this with a given questions the significant figures and also um the decimal place of giving for you to use right so when you get that then it means that you are good to go we have our three values. That's our three points, which is one, 1.265315, and two. So from there, then we are going to text for the condition. Which condition are we going to use now? Then we are going to do the substitution, whereby we find a function of one. So we are going to find a function of one, which will give you negative five. So the function of one, that means that when you substitute the upper bound and the lower bound into the function, you're going to get negative five. Then when you substitute the xr which is the midpoint into the fraction into the function you're going to get negative 1.0239 and when you put the upper bound you're going to get negative uh, you're going to get 14. so in this case how do we verify which point we should work with to get the second item or to get iteration two now the point you're going to get should be a point which will satisfy this condition which means that that point within that point that is where the root of equation is. So then let's multiply that because they're going to take this. So you multiply this by this, but when you multiply this by this, you're going to get what? A positive value. And when you multiply this by this, you're going to get what? A negative value. All what you are interested in is the negative value. Because when it's a positive value, it means that the root of equation is not within that point. So the root of equation is not within 1,1.26315. But it's therefore within 1.26315 and 2. So now we have our new point, which is what? 1.265315, comma 2. Then for the iteration 2, we are going to take the same thing again, then use this formula to find our x out. Then you substitute the values into the function and get their function value. Multiply it to see whether it satisfies this equation. Uh, it satisfies this or condition and when you satisfy that that means that those two points that you've gotten that when you multiply is less than zero that means that the root of equation into that so depending on your question they will give you it can ask you to do um iteration four four iteration five iteration 
it depends right so this is how we use the force position to find the root of equation using numerical method thank you very much for watching this video but wait let me show you something sometimes they will give us to find the absolute error or the approximation error now when you say the error what do you know about the absolute error you know that for the values you are getting they are all absolute they are all approximated values but not the true values so when for for this you're going to take with the radio that is the midpoint that will be x r1 minus x r2 over x r1 which will give you the percentage um error and that is a way of finding the percentage error so let's note this formula right so in a question when they give it to us to find the error with this that is the formula you're going to use right and this formula cut across depending on the formula um the iteration you are using it's cut across thank you very much for watching this video